What's up everyone? This is Marcus at TradeSmith and I'm going to show you a new program that I joined called Warrior Trading Pro and that is a program that I am in. I've been doing for six weeks and I'm going to show you exactly what I plan to do with this small account challenge. So, okay, it was a real weird day today, but I did leave away uh, with some profit. I end up ending the day on $156 a day trading BDR. And if you all are looking at BDR anytime throughout the day, uh, you may have noticed that it was one of the top gappers up at the beginning of the day. Um, early in the trade, I wanted to focus on the first and second pullback. So I did work to trade that. And in trading that, I'm going to show you this video here. In trading BDR, you can see that I was looking for that first pullback. We noticed that out of the gate, out of all the stocks, this was one that did um, show uh, some momentum early in the day. And it definitely rose pretty quick, uh, even from $1.50. I was looking at the pre-market high. It broke through that right away. And then, of course, it eased up. And I saw that I wanted to get in in the first five minute candle to make a new high, which is a safer entry. So as I began to set up for it, I noticed that it was a little bit clunky. I had my hand on the buy button. I hit it uh, and it rejected the order, which was a little weird. Um, I did have it um, at a thousand shares and I was trying to stay a little bit uh, above the, the price because I noticed that it had been shooting up. I did fill the order and it didn't fill right away. So I was about to close it. And then I noticed that it automatically uh, went in. And that was pretty good because I wanted to get in the trade and it got me in at 230. I mean, 213. It went up to almost 240 and it stopped. And you can see me working to get out of the trade. And of course, I did have to sell on the axe uh, and I sold and made a little bit of a profit mainly from um, uh, 215 to around 226 10 cent profit on that first trade as i'm preparing for the second trade i'm doing the same thing first five minute candle will make a new high i'm waiting for it to break around that 46 246 mark once i see that begin to take place um, you can see my hand is over the buy button I hit the buy button right around that 246 mark. But at the end of the day, I noticed that there was some weird things that were happening with the stock. As far as the news, the news didn't seem like it was um, a really good catalyst. Um, there was some insider uh, buying uh, a, f a couple of weeks ago or about a week ago. So, But I was nevertheless looking for it to crack over that 245 uh, mark. Once it began to ease up to 245, I got in the trade. Um, and from there, I wanted to see it rise above the 250 mark. And of course, I didn't really get a good feel on that. I wanted to get in at 245, maybe 240. Maybe next time I'll do that um, in order to get a better feel. But you can see that I got in the trade and I got back out because it seemed like it wanted to pull back. Uh, and of course it did end up going a little bit higher, but no more than the 275 mark. Now, when it did begin to cross that 275 mark, um, I did notice that there were some opportunities to maybe just jump in. But uh, again, I wanted to focus on the first five minute candle to make a new high. Afterwards, I will look at um, taking that first pullback of that one minute candle after the first five minute candle to make a new high. So I will add that to the trade plan in the future. But right now I'm just sticking to the trade plan. And I did hit my target of $150 just for today. So at this point, I'm just watching the stock and I only will jump in unless it's a five minute candle that making a new high, which is uh, the current uh, trade setup that I'm looking for later we noticed that the stock actually halted and of course I have um, trackers to scanners to constantly look at halted Scott stocks so I did notice that there were some 
uh, reasons why it may have halted. I, you know, of course, anytime it halts, I go and look that up. Didn't see anything the first time, but I did notice there was a lot of shares that were being sold going into that halt. So that was um, something that was a little bit concerning. So now that I'm waiting on resumption of the stock, I am looking at the time and sale of the last order. And I noticed that it was at five, uh, at 945 and five seconds. So that lets you know that it's either going to be a five minute or a 10 minute halt. So you want to look at that time at this point to see when the resumption will take place, which will be in three, two, one, and then the resumption will start. And of course, because there was a lot of sale orders, you notice that it did flush down. Now, there it will be opportunities in the future to do a dip um, buy at this point, because some people, they panic when they see that that halt is taking place. But I was looking at that $3 mark and I was thinking about, you know, that would be a good entry because it is such a irrational sell at that point. And it typically will end up um, filling in that um, that move that it just made back to the upside. So it did do that. Of course, felt a little bit of FOMO, but I was okay with that. Again, sticking to the trade plan. But I did constantly look at a few things about this stock. Again, it was popping up and it, it was uh, a lot on the high a day Momo scanner. So I'm knowing that a lot of people are looking at this stock and jumping in. Constantly seeing the halt level be extended. So you can see the circuit breaker halt was at 46, but then of course it was extended and pushed out. And it looked like it was potentially gonna go into um, further halts at times. But of course it began to um, continue to trade. Now we notice that the stock later began to do a little bit of sideways trading. And of course, at this point, I'm still just watching the stock, looking at what patterns that may resolve. But one thing that was noticeable is that it started, it had that first, that second pullback. And of course, at this point, you can see that it's consolidating. Now, one thing weird happened while it was consolidating, and we'll see that in a moment, moment but um, there was a period that it kind of stayed around this uh, 330, the 340 mark, and it bounced a little bit back and forth. Later, it had a sign of a false breakout and began to come back down. Of course, some people were looking at maybe a potential uh, flat top setup where it may end up breaking out of that. And of course, you can see uh, I'm definitely looking at that, looking at certain levels. And then later, as it began to trade, um, it still stayed sideways and it began to hit at that uh, 338 mark. And as you're looking at level two, you can see orders being put in and you can see certain things happening. Um, but all of a sudden it just stopped. And when it stopped, I noticed that it wasn't a typical halt at this point. And this is one thing that is very important when a stock is trading. And of course, at this point, um, I can't rely on just the tools that I have here. So the first thing I do whenever I see a stock halt in this fashion, and I knew it must have been serious, was to definitely go to certain websites. So, so one website that I use is NASDAQTrader.com. And I looked up certain halts and you can see the different halts that took place. And of course, this is the halt that took place earlier uh, with BDRT. And you can see that uh, the type and the reason and there are different codes for a different halt. So you can see that it's a, a T1 halt pending news. And normally it's because of some type of material that came out or some type of news that may have happened. We don't know what it may be that caused the, the T1, um, but uh, there were different sites but um, that you can use. And I'll talk more about those in the future, but at some point you will have to add that to your tool set. And of course, another tool that you can use is looking up different um, using sites such as stock tweets. And of course, 
this is only a reference uh, by looking at what people uh, links to other articles that they may put out. So it is helpful, but I don't take it for faith's value when uh, they just say, oh, it's good or it's bad. But definitely uh, want to um, vet any of the uh, information that is there. Another site that you can use is uh, looking at um, the actual uh, New York Stock Exchange site itself. And you can look up the actual equity and you can see that it said the trade and resumption will be at 1500 hours Eastern Standard Time, which is 3, 3 p.m. So I noticed right then and there that that is um, a serious thing. So at this point, I'm definitely calling it a day. I'm going to just be happy with uh, what I have and not wear out my welcome. Uh, still see that it will not resume anytime soon. So I have to get to work. So all in all, a good day. I think uh, it'll be good to know what happened uh, with BDRT, I mean, uh, BDR later today. So I will be just looking at the news on that and focus on doing some SIM trades and uh, maybe some uh, swing trades. Um, so I may be doing that throughout the day and uh, continuing going to the, the office. So had a good day today, $156. Let me know what tool do you use whenever there is a disruptive uh, halt such as this. So let me know what tools or websites you may use to uh, definitely stay in the know. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know if there are any questions or technology that you want us to look into. This is a new channel for more tips and tricks on trading technology. Hit the like button and go to tradesmith.io.